Hi everyone, today I'll be showing you how to set up a vehicle using the Multiversal Vehicle Controller. So to start the video, I want you to make sure that you've downloaded the demo project of the Multiversal Vehicle Controller from our package manager. So what you're going to do is go to Tools, go to Multiversal Vehicle Controller and go to Edit Settings and then go to Packages. From there, you will have the Getting Started Demo Package. Make sure you download it and import it. If you're using the community version of the toolkit, the demo package will be imported automatically. Next thing what we're going to do is find some prefabs or car models that we're going to use to set up a vehicle. So we go to resources, prefabs, vehicles, cars, and then you select the car that you want. Make sure the prefab that you select has an empty prefix, but in most cases you might have your own model that you want to set up from zero. So what I'm going to do is go to models instead of prefabs and find a vehicle model that is so messed up that we're going to fix it together. So I'm going to drag the model inside the hierarchy and here we have our first model. Now upon importing the model you might have noticed some issues with it. First thing is the center of the model. It should be here, not here. Second thing is that the vehicle model is flipped on the Z axis. It should be in this way, not in this way. First thing that we're going to do is make sure the 3D model of the car is facing the forward direction of the scene. So what we're going to do is zoom out a bit and make sure you're selecting the 3D model, select the rotate tool, press control and rotate it 180 degrees. Now double click on the model and also make sure that the car object is on top of the zero surface of the scene. As you can see, the car is actually on top of the grid, so there is nothing to fix here. If the grid is not visible for you, make sure you click on the grid icon over here. Now let's get back to the perspective view. We're gonna double click on our object. Next thing that we're gonna fix is the center pivot of our model. Now as I said, we're gonna double click on the vehicle, go to game object, create empty, and make sure you select create empty and not create empty child or create empty parent as they do not work. When we create an empty game object, it's going to be at the center of our object and that's what we need. Now we're going to rename it. Always make sure that the empty game object is at the bottom of our model. Now we're going to unpack the model and drag its content inside of our empty game object. And we're going to delete the rest. And next we're going to reset the transform so it's placed on the center of our scene. Great! Now we have a ready 3D model. And next thing that we're gonna fix are the wheels. Now we click on one of the wheels that we have here. We're gonna select the parent of the wheel, double click on it, and go to game object again and create an empty. Cool! We're gonna name it wheel front right. Now notice that the empty game object is outside of our car. Now that's cool! So what we're going to do is drag the parent of our wheel model and put it inside of the empty wheel game object and disable the rest of the car so we can work freely on the wheel. Now it is advised that your car model has a wheel that is separable which means that it has different components like for example here we have a wheel that has a tire mesh, a rim mesh and so on. So what we're going to do is create an empty gum object inside of our wheel and name it rim and duplicate it and name it tire. Next thing, we're going to drag the tire mesh inside our empty game object and drag the rest inside the rim and delete everything else. Cool, we're going to name this rim base, rim and tire. Make sure you follow this exact structure for setting up the wheel. Now we're going to re-enable our car and Double click on our car to zoom out, select other wheels, double click on them one by one and create empty objects for each of them. This is for wheel, rear, right. This is for wheel, rear, left. And this is for wheel, front, left. Cool! Now what we're going to do is delete those models. But make sure the wheel that we set up earlier in its position. Now we're gonna collapse the car. You can disable it if you want. 
Now what we're going to do is duplicate the wheel that we've set up a bit earlier three times and put every duplicate inside one of the empty game objects. Cool. Now make sure you reset the transform of each wheel. Now we have four wheels but they are not in the right direction. So what we're going to do is fix them one by one. So we're going to double click on this wheel to focus on it, select the child and rotate it by 180 degrees in case it's in the opposite direction of the original wheel. Now we're going to grab the content, drag it inside the parent game object and delete the rest and do the same thing for the other wheels. We're going to double click, rotate, grab the content, delete the rest. Same for the other wheel, but this time we're not going to rotate it since it's in the right direction. So we're going to select the content, grab it and delete the rest. Now we're going to create the same structure that the wheel front left has. So let's get back to the front left wheel, double click on it and create an empty gun object, one for the rim, duplicate it, one other for the tire. Drag the tire content and drag the rim content. That's it, that's the first wheel. Next, the wheel rear left, create an empty game object, one for the rim, duplicate, one other for the tire. Drag the tire mesh, drag the rim mesh, and now for the last wheel. Create an empty game object, rim, duplicate, tire. Drag the tire mesh, drag the rim mesh, and there we go, we're done setting up the wheels. Now, this is a bit intensive process, but I'm sure if you repeat it many times, it's gonna stick in your head. Now, we're gonna re-enable the car, and as you can see, the wheels have been set up correctly. Now, what we're gonna do is select all the car content and right-click with your mouse or go to game object and create empty parent. Now, we're gonna name this chassis. Make sure the name resembles the one in here. We're going to collapse it. We're going to create an empty game object inside of our car for our wheels. And we're going to name it Wheel Transforms. Select the wheels that we've just set up a bit earlier and drag them inside the Wheel Transforms empty game object. Cool! Now what's missing are the car brakes. Now the multiversal vehicle controller uses brakes to enhance the visuals of the vehicle. So instead of creating everything from scratch, what we're going to do is go to the wheel transforms object, duplicate it and rename it wheel brakes. Now by duplicating the, the same game object, it's going to duplicate the meshes as well. So what we're going to do is remove everything inside those objects and now we have empty game objects exactly at the same position of those wheels now we're going to rename them one by one okay cool so let me clarify some things the reason i told you to follow the same names and the same structure of our car is because the multiversal vehicle controller detects this kind of structure and the same names to auto assign variables inside the vehicle component so make sure your car has chassis a wheel brakes object that contains different game objects for the brakes and if your model doesn't have brakes you can keep them empty or use some prefabs that we have from the demo package also make sure the wheel transforms has wheels that are named in the same structure if your car has multiple wheels make sure at least to follow the same structure and assign other wheels by yourself okay cool now for the brakes as i told you we have some ready prefabs from the demo package so what we're gonna do is go to assets resources prefabs and inside prefabs you go to vehicles parts and brakes Inside brakes, you'll have two folders, one for the calipers and one for the brake discs. So we're going to drag and drop these prefabs inside of our model. So let's start with the discs first. So you'll notice that for each type of disc, we have a normal disc and a flip disc. And flip discs are basically for left wheels. So we're going to drag the flip disc inside our front left wheel. And as you can see, it's in the right direction. Next, we're going to drag the normal disc inside of our front right wheel. As you can see, it's in the right direction too. And we're going to repeat the same process for the other two wheels. Flipped for the rear left and the normal one for the rear right. Cool! Now we have added discs. And this might not make any sense for you, as I told you that we're going to use these empty game objects for the brakes. And that's true. 
are not for the discs, rather for the calipers. Why you might ask? Because the discs rotate with the wheel itself, while the calipers don't follow the exact same rotation of the wheel, rather they follow the steer angle and the camber and so on. So, what we're gonna do is close the discs folder, open the calipers, and choose from one of these. I'm gonna choose the red one, so we're gonna go with the caliper 01, and as you can see, we have a caliper for each wheel. So, the easiest thing to do is drag each caliper inside of its respective empty game object. So, caliper FL for break FL, and so on. Cool! And basically that's it. And if you want to customize the calipers a little bit, you can rotate them on the X axis. Also, you can do the same thing for the real wheels. Cool. Okay, here we have a problem. You might notice that the wheel calipers and the wheel discs are exceeding the size of the rim. And that might be a problem for now, but the multiversal rig controller fixes that at one time. So you don't need to worry. And that's it for setting up a model of a car inside of Unity to work accordingly with the multiversal link controller. So the next thing that we're gonna do is add the vehicle component to this model. And one thing to note is that the game object that you're gonna add the vehicle component to, you have to make sure that it's not prefab, otherwise you have to unpack it, as the multiversal rig controller is going to modify the hierarchy of the model that you have. So what we're gonna do is go to tools, multiversal rig controller, new vehicle. Okay, we have successfully added the vehicle controller to the select game object, we press OK, and as you can see, the vehicle component has been added. Now, we have a bunch of problems that we're gonna fix one by one. First thing, we go to the components and add a chassis component. The structure of our model will be modified a bit, we're gonna press yes please. For now, we're just gonna configure the engine position and we're gonna go back to the rest in other tutorials. So, what we're gonna do is drag the sphere to the exact position of our engine. Cool! Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is add 4 wheels for our wheel model and go to wheel transforms and drag and drop the wheels that we've created a bit earlier. Now, you might need to assign things manually, but in case your model structure is correct, as I have demonstrated a bit earlier, you just need to click on Generate Wheels and the toolkit will take care of everything. So, we're gonna click Yes, please again, click Yes, and we're gonna select the powertrain of our car. Now, the Toyota Supra actually is a rear-wheel drive vehicle, so we're gonna press this one, and for the steering, it steers with the front wheel, so we're gonna press this one. And as you can see, everything is set up correctly, except for two variables, that are the rim edge and the brake disc. We're gonna get to them in other tutorials. Some messages might be shown up, but they won't make much of a difference as some features might not be enabled during the runtime. But as I said, we're going to fix them in future tutorials. Also, we're gonna skip the exhausts and move on to other things. Now, notice that a message has shown up that the vehicle doesn't have any type of colliders, and that's true. So, what we're gonna do is select the main objects of our car and make sure to add colliders to them. While adding mesh colliders, make sure convex is on. Okay, we're done with setting up the colliders of the vehicle. Next thing, we're gonna move on to the performance. Now, in the performance tab, we're gonna find a bunch of settings that might be confusing, but we're gonna get to them one by one. First thing, make sure you select the vehicle type. For now, we only support cars and heavy trucks. So we're gonna select car, and for the class, we're gonna select super. Okay, now, next thing, we're gonna assign a curb weight to our vehicle. And since the multiversal vehicle controller is based on accuracy, we're gonna use real data from the internet. A website that we advise you to use to get real data from the internet is automobilecatalog.com. We're not sponsored by it, but it's just a cool website that I always use to find real data for multiple cars. So we're just gonna search for the same vehicle and scroll down and find the details that we need. Okay, now let's get back to Unity. So for the weight of the vehicle, it's 1 ton 630 kilograms. 
Now for the engine, I have already set up an engine for our souls, but since this is a tutorial, I'm gonna create a new one. So to create an engine, what we're gonna do is go to tools, multiversal vic controller, edit settings, go to engines and chargers, and click the plus button. Here we have the old engine, so I'm just gonna delete it and put it in the same exact location of the old one. Cool. Now what we're gonna do is edit the engine that we've just created. We're gonna use a name for it, so I'm just gonna name it i6 for inline 6, a turbo motor with a 3 liter displacement, and just put the name of the engine to JZ GTE. Cool! First thing first, we're gonna have to choose an alignment of the engine. It's an inline engine, so we're gonna keep it on inline. The fuel type it's gas, cylinders count is 6. For other data, as I said, you're gonna have to use the website that I've just mentioned. So the mass of the engine is 230 kilograms, the minimum RPM is 800, the redline RPM is 6800. It's gonna be clamped, so what we're gonna do is modify the maximum RPM first and make it 8500. The overall RPM is 7121. And the red line RPM, as I said, is 8800. For the horsepower, this engine has 320 horsepower at 5900 RPM. For the torque, it's 427.5 Newton meters at 5300 RPM. Cool! For sound effects and audio mixing, we're gonna get to them in another tutorial. You can go to our documentation and learn more about the feature. So, now we're gonna get back, close this window, and select the engine that we've just created. Below the engine field, you can find some offset and override fields that you can use to modify the engine output. So for example, if you want to add power to the engine, use this field, and if you want to override the peak RPM, use this field, while enabling the override peak torque RPM, you can also use the output scale to multiply the output. Next thing, we have the power and torque curves. This is by default in automatic mode, but you can put it in manual to modify the curves. If you've already made some mistakes, you can use this reset button to reset everything back to the normal values. So we're gonna take it back to automatic. Also you'll notice this chain button, it's used to link the two curves together through calculations. Next thing we're gonna assign is the top speed. The top speed of the Toyota Supra is 284 km per hour. Next thing that we're gonna assign is the aspiration of the engine. And since the Supra is turbocharged, we're gonna click on this and click turbocharger. Now we have a turbocharger that already exists with the demo package, but we're gonna create a new one. So what we're gonna do again is go to tools, multiversal vehicle controller, edit settings, and delete the old one and recreate. So we're gonna name it 2JZ GTE Twin Turbo. So the first thing that we're gonna do is mark this turbocharger as stock, as it's the default turbocharger for the vehicle. Now we choose the type of the charger, so it's a turbocharger and not supercharger, so we click on this. Next thing, we have the turbo counts. The engine has two turbos, so we choose twin. Now these values might be a bit tricky, but make sure you find correct values through the internet and put them here. I did some research and I found out the inertia RPM of these two turbos are 1780 RPM. The turbo size or the rub size of the turbo is 09299. The minimum boost is 0.886 and the maximum boost is 139. Now next thing we have are the sound clips of our turbo. We're gonna skip that for now and get back to it in another tutorial. So next thing we have are the compatible engines. So since this turbo is a stock turbo, we're gonna add the engine that we've just created. And there we are, we have a fully set up turbo except for the audio clips. We're gonna close this and get back to the vehicle and select turbocharger that we've just created. Cool! Next thing we have the fuel system. Now if you want to disable the fuel system you go to the settings panel and disable the fuel and battery system from over here. But we're gonna keep it enabled so we can explain to you how to use it. So first thing we have is the fuel capacity. 
and the fuel tank capacity for the MK4 Supra is about 18.5 gallons which is equal to 70 liters. For the consumption we're gonna use the automobile catalog to calculate some values. So as you can see here in the fuel consumption section we have a lot of values. So the first one as you can see here is for the extra urban, the next one is for the city, the next one is for the highway and so on. So we're gonna use these two ranges to calculate the average value. So we open our calculator and 19.5 to 23.4 we divide by 2 and that's our city average consumption. It's 21.45 so it would over here. Next thing we have the highway consumption at 10.3 to 12.4 and divided by 2 to get the average 1135 and that's it we have added the fuel system values successfully next thing we have the rev limiter you can enable or disable this feature depending on the car and as far as i know the supra has a rev limiter so we're going to keep this on also you can use the exhaust effects but we're going to disable this for another tutorial Next thing we have the NOS, we're gonna enable this and we can use the default values found over here. Okay cool, well now we can close the performance tab and move on to the transmission tab. This tab has everything related to the drivetrain of your vehicle. So first thing we're gonna select the top of the gearbox which is a manual gearbox. We don't need an audio group and we're gonna talk about this in another tutorial. We're gonna keep the maximum torque as it is and keep the shifting values as they are. For the rest, we're gonna use the automobile catalog to find values for our gearbox. So we go to the transmission specifications section and we click on this button to find values for our gearbox. What we're gonna do is copy and paste these values inside of Unity. As you saw, the gears count is 6 and we're gonna move to the gear ratios. Now if you're going to use speed targets, make sure you modify the final ratio first and then move on to the rest of the values. Otherwise, if you want to choose the manual mode, there is no importance for modifying the final ratio first or last. But we're gonna start with it in waves. So the final ratio of the Supra is 3.267. From there, we're gonna move from the 6th speed to the 5th, the 4th, the 3rd and so on. Okay, so um, the sixth gear is 0 0.793, the fifth has a ratio of 1, the fourth gear has a ratio of 1.313, the third gear 1.685, the second gear is 2.36, and the first 3.827, and the reverse gear is 3.28. So next thing we move on to the differential. Now we have different types of differentials. One that's open, a locked one, and LSD. By default it's LSD, but make sure you have the actual type of differential set for your car. And for the differential ratio, we're gonna keep it as one. Cool, next thing we move on to the brakes. Now, most other toolkits give you a torque value that you modify, but using the Multiversal Brake Controller, you have a bunch of parameters that calculate the torque for you. So the Supra MK4 has steel brakes, so we're gonna keep that. The diameter is 302 millimeters. It has two piston calipers and two pads. The pressure is basically the same for all brakes. And for friction, we're gonna use a multiple of 0 0.85. That's for the front brakes. Now we move on to the rear brakes. The diameter is 291, the pistons are 2, pads 2, pressure the same, and the friction multiplier is 0 0.85. And there we are, we've set up the brakes. Next we move on to the steering, and basically what you want to do is make sure you have the maximum steer angle right. And for other values, it's not as important, as they are just going to affect your handling at play mode. So if your vehicle has a small turning angle, make sure you bump up this value to at least 42. Otherwise you can keep it to 35. But since the Toyota Supra MK4 has a small turning angle, I'm gonna put it as 42. Next we jump to, to dynamic steering. This actually modifies the rear wheels steering and as you can see currently the rear wheels can steer up to 4.2 degrees when the front wheels are fully left or right. Next thing we have the rear steer type, you can keep it to inverted unless you want the rear wheels to steer in the same direction of the front wheels. And in case of our Supra it doesn't have the system so we're gonna disable it. 
Next thing, we move on to the suspension. The length of the suspension of the MK4 Supra is 170 millimeters. The stance value is actually a customization multiplier, the same as the camber angle, the caster angle, the toe angle, and the side offset of the wheel. Next thing, we have the target length, which is the minimal length the suspension can reach when it's fully compressed. For the Toyota Supra, we have 79.5 millimeters. But if you want to use a percentage value, you go to Tools and Edit Settings go to the general editor settings and go to spring target measurement and change it to percentage that way as you can see we've changed the target value from millimeters to percentage but i'm just going to use length measurement type so next thing we have the suspension stiffness we're going to add 43144.7 newtons for the damper 2705.2 for the camber angle the super has a minus one static camber and a caster angle of five most vehicles have between 0 and minus 1 camber angle. Some cars have 0.5 and some others have 0. And in case of our car, it's minus 1. And for the caster angle, it's basically always 5. And for the toe and side offset, just leave them at 0. The length of the rear suspension is 180 millimeters. The stance we're going to keep it at 0. The target length is 89.5. The stiffness is 47,235 newtons. The damper force is 2,665.5 newtons. The camber angle is minus 0.5. The caster is 5. And notice that as you modify the stance variables, the visualization of the gizmos changes. This will give you an idea of how your vehicle looks inside the editor so if we modify the camper angle it's gonna update itself in the scene view as well so now we're done with the suspension let's move on to the stability tab here as you can see everything is set to zero first thing we're gonna enable anti sway bars and set the front anti sway bar force to 10858.4 newtons the rear force is 7003 newtons for the abs esp and tcs we're just gonna enable them you can set these values to basically any car you want for the steering helper we're just gonna set the linear intensity to 0.5 and the angular intensity to 0.5 as well we're going to enable counter steer for the handling we're just going to put it at 0.59 that's an average handling rate for the supra as it's not that stable on the road for the weight distribution it's 0.53 for the weight height we're just going to press this reset button and it's going to calculate everything for us cool now as you can see the center of mass of our vehicle has been calculated successfully Next thing we move on to the physics or the rigid body configuration. Make sure you set the interpolation of our rigid body to interpolate or extrapolate. Otherwise some jitter may occur at play mode and it's not gonna be fun. So we're gonna select interpolate. We're gonna increase the maximum angular velocity to 10.5. We're gonna enable downforce and we're gonna add some downforce to the vehicle. For the drag value we're gonna use 0.16. For the angular drag we're gonna have 0.25. For the drag scale we're gonna put 1.08. Cool, so we've set up everything, now we're going to save this game object as a prefab. We're going to go to resources, prefabs, vehicles, and I'm going to create a new folder so I do not overwrite other prefabs and name it tutorial. I'm going to drag the game object inside the prefabs folder and voila! Now we're going to enable our environment and place our car on top of the racetrack. And that's it, have fun playing with your car and enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial and I hope you find it helpful. If you have any questions please write to me in the comment section below and make sure you join our discord server and subscribe to the channel. That's it and goodbye.